Welcome to the first ever episode of Kai Talks. I'm Kai Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Today, we're going to talk about taking hits, getting knocked down, and having the strength and determination to get back up again. I might be 11 years old, but I have my share of moments where life got tough. There's a famous line in the movie Rocky. It goes like this. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are. It will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning's done. My guest today knows this and lives by it. At 17, he was named the head of Danbury Trashers hockey team. Since then, a lot has happened. He is the co-host of Talking Trash Podcast. He is the owner of the Champs Boxing Club, one of the organizers at Danbury San Gennaro Festival, a son, a father, a husband, and my good friend, AJ Galante. AJ, happy to be here. I am so excited to be with you, Caillou. And I have one question. I know you have all the questions for me, oh, good. but I have a one question for you. Yeah, yeah, Are you really a ninja? Oh. <laughs> if I was, then it wouldn't be a ninja secret, would it? I'm just messing with you. I'm so happy to be here. Your first episode. Yeah, you, of you, you, I love your logo. It's amazing, right? I love it. I love it. I would, I would, I would like brag about my having a good mom, but she, but I can't talk about her in the show right now. I have to talk about you, man. <laughs> Let's do it. So, also, AJ, can I just be the first to say that my pet bunny is also named AJ. Your pet bunny? Yeah. Is named AJ. Yes. Did you name the bunny after me? Or no, no, you- no. It's like something that stands for Arlo Junior. It's my dead. He was my uh, goat, but then he sadly passed away. Well, I'm honored that there's a bunny named AJ out there. So I'm I'm super excited sometime, to know that. Maybe sometime you can like pet him and say I hello. I would love to pet AJ. I would love to pet the oh, bunny. Oh, I, I would love to meet him. You should bring him to the gym. Oh, yeah. She's, she's <laughs> Does right. he come out of the house or he just stays in the house? Yeah, I think he stays in the house sometimes, but we, we take him out for like a walk. Yeah. Well, let's bring him uh, bring him to the yeah, gym maybe you can do and I'll pet like, a little, little <laughs> AJ. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bunny boxing. <laughs> we can even make a movie about that. AJ. Bunny boxing. That's a we good idea. That. AJ, part one, the rise of champion. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> okay. So let's cut to the chase. AJ, talk to me. <laughs> Tell me your story, but don't leave out some of your biggest challenges. Because that's the part that we're trying to just to tell the millions of viewers that will be watching us. Well, listen, I mean, um, I'm 37 years old, okay, but I've been born and raised basically in the Danbury area my whole life. Um, I went to school actually in New Fairfield, but all my cousins and family were either in Danbury or New York area. But yeah, I mean, I had a pretty normal childhood, I would say, for the most part. Um, I really love professional wrestling. Do you like wrestling? You ever watch it? (laughs) What's wrestling? <laughs> so I, I used to love pro wrestling as a kid. So I used to wrestle with my friends. You know, when my mom wasn't, you know, around, we'd get in trouble if she found out. But I liked wrestling, sports. Um, yeah, I had a big family, lots of cousins, video games. You and I have talked about video games all the time. Splatoon. Splatoon. I haven't learned it yet. I'm excited for you to teach me. But yeah, I mean, we just, um, I had a pretty normal upbringing. I think most people start out that way. But like you say, challenges happen. And, um, you know, there was a lot of things that happened in my life. Um, and I, I, I think what you started this episode with the Rocky quote is the perfect quote for life. Okay. Cause a lot of people think about Rocky and they think about boxing, but really that quote is the perfect quote for life because, Nobody ever doesn't go through challenges and it's all about being able to, you know, absorb those challenging tough times and um, just keep moving forward. Just like the quote says. Everything you said is completely right. But so I'm so as your child is old, dude, but. Well, how about your adulthood? Do you like. So. So, yeah. So. So, yes. Like you said, um, my dad started the Danbury Trashers back all the way 20 years ago in 2004. And he named me the president of the team at 17. So I was really young. That wasn't a normal thing to, you know, 17-year-olds don't really run pro hockey teams. But, 
you know, he, he put me, he, it's sometimes in life, the best way to learn is to get dunked right into the deep end of the pool and you got to learn how to swim right away. You I know? feel, I feel you, man. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an 11 year old advocate. I know how you feel. <laughs> You know how I, you know how it is yeah, because I'm, I'm you're a queen that literally spoke at the Danbury City Capitol. I, I know. know. I know how you feel like when you like feel like you have like a big title for like such a little age. You feel like you have some stuff you need to prepare about. It's a lot of pressure. I know, right? It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure. So what happens is, you know, you have two choices to make in life. You could either fight for it and keep trying your best or you can you know, run away and hide in the corner. And I always was taught to just always fight and keep going forward and, and doing your best. And um, you know what? In life, nobody goes undefeated. So you're going to take some losses. You're going to have some wins. There's going to be good times, bad times. But as long as you keep moving forward, that's really all that matters. And, um, you know, we only had the trashes for two years, unfortunately. Then we lost the team. And then... Um, Really, it was a tough time. I went through a lot of depressing times because that team was very important to me, and then we didn't have it anymore. So it was very tough, and it was depressing. And for many years, I just, you know, I kept going to school. I was working a regular job, which there's nothing wrong with that. But I just always thought there was something more for me out there. And then by fluke, I got myself into boxing. I started um, helping a fighter in our area, helping him with his career, making some decisions, advising him, you know, kind of like a school counselor. That's kind of what my role was when I started in boxing. And then as you know, because you you were one of the toughest guys in the gym, we started Champs Boxing Club in 2015. And um, we're going on nine years that we've been able to provide Danbury with a, 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 a cool boxing gym for professionals, amateur fighters, but more importantly, the kids. And, um, and you know, you've been there a lot and, uh, you, you keep knocking our bags down. You punch so hard. You, I keep replacing our bags because of you. You're, you're costing me money, Caillou. I'm sorry, but bill me. <laughs> no, I can't bill you. It's, it's the price. You know, when you got a guy like it's you coming same. in and it's, same. it's, it's I, I can't bill you. It's not your fault. It's, I got to get heavier bags because you That's just okay. keep knocking just them down. Me. I'll just let my, I'll just beg my mom. No, leave your mom alone. She does enough. She doesn't have to buy us bags. Okay, I'll leave her alone. I, I'll leave her alone for, for the first time in my life. Okay, good. Mom, you're off the car. I'll leave you alone with this. I, I see you with that. I see you doing that. Okay, so, so, so what was, so middle school was good for you? Yeah, middle school, well, I gotta be honest, middle school was tough years, you know, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, um, I always find that middle school is a tough age for kids, especially boys, you oh, know what I, I mean? You. And, you know, uh, there was times I was dealing with bullies in 6th grade, 7th grade, and, um, you know, it's tough, it, it's, it's a tough thing, I think everybody kind of goes through it. Um, but what I've learned, Caillou, is usually at that age, the bullies are usually the ones that need the most care because they're missing something in their life. So that's why they're bullying other kids. So when I started to learn that about the bullies, you, you find a different way to go about it. And, um, you know, you try to, you just try to do your best, but it's very hard. Middle school is tough years for people. I feel you, brother. There's, there's bullies every turn. It's like you're, it's like left or death. Life for death. What grade are you in, Caillou? Sixth grade. Yeah, it's savage. so it's savage. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's tough. Savage. But all I can tell you is you just stay tough. You just keep doing the best you can. And uh, before you know it, those years will be done and you just keep moving forward. Yeah, it's good for me. I'm going to a new school, but I will miss my friends. Like, she was, she's my, she was one of my best friends since kindergarten. She was like, one of like BFFs. She like was like, and also I had my friend called. He was autistic too, with her, with his little sister. Mm -hmm. Liked her too. She was nice, cool. In fourth grade, in fourth or third grade, yeah, in St. Joseph School, she gone to a public school. Mm -hmm. at, right after fifth fifth grade was uh -huh. right after fifth grade, he was like gone to a public school. It was really hard for me because like one of my he was autistic too, and I yeah. was autistic. He was like. My, he was like my brother. He was like my autistic brother, my ride or die. He was like, we were like inseparable. Yeah. Until we left. But we still have play dates together. We still have fun. 
We still know each other. Well, we that's good. It's not like we've been isolated for all like all these years. Well, listen, if he's really, you know, like I said, I have friends that moved. I have one of my best friends lives in Florida, so I don't get to see him that much. But Across the United States. But, yeah, I know. I He's all the way down south. But you know what? Your real friends will always be in your life. So your guy, John, he'll always be there no matter what school you guys go to. So, AJ, what do you want to do when you grow up? Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I was supposed to grow up already. I'm already 37, but I, I feel like I still have to grow up sometimes. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know if you ever, I don't know if anyone ever has a plan. I think some people think they know what they want to do, but life throws so many twists and turns that sometimes, you know, things change. You know what I mean? And, um, but yeah, I think I'm at the point in my life where, you know, like I said, I, I have a podcast myself. Um, trying to do stuff with that, doing a lot with the gym, trying to do more for the kids in the community and, um, you know, just taking it day by day. It's it's very hard at my age to make a big switch. So what I do is just try to take all the things I've learned throughout the years and try to do, you know, do better things. Were you scared when your dad made you the GM at 17? Very scared. You know, like we like we said, I mean, um, I think um, no matter what. Sometimes you just get into situations in life where it's scary. Like you've done a lot of big things and it's public speaking and stuff like that. It's scary. So sometimes, you know, we, we all love our parents. And, um, you know, as a guy, we always look up to our fathers and you never want to disappoint our parents. So, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it was very scary. It really, it really was. But again, you just learn to figure it out sometimes, you know. Yeah, just tell your parents how you feel and what... And how scared you are, and they'll help you. Yeah. It must have been very sad when your when your father had to go to jail for a little bit. Were you very scared? Did you had anything? Did no. you had anyone to take care of? Well, you know, again, I, it was it was very sad. Obviously, you know what I mean. And um, it was it was a tough time for our whole family. And um, you know, as a as a boy, I felt like I had to become the man of the house. You have a little, you know, I have a younger sister. I have my mom, so it was very tough. Where's and your sister, where's your sister? Where's she at? My sister is my sister's still around. She lives. She's four years younger than me. So when when you know all this happened with my father, she was four years younger. So I always felt. So she's thirty. She's gonna be thirty four this year. So she's forty four. Forty four. Oh, I would love to say she's 44, but she's 34. I'm 37. She's, oh, oh, God, man, the math is bad. She's younger. She's my little sister. So I've always used to tease her and give her a hard time. But, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a tough time for all of us, you know, and especially my sister, my mom. But, you know, you just, like we always say, just keep moving. You keep moving. I respect that. I respect that for you. Thank you. So here's a personal question, like, if you get to change anything that you want in your past, what would it be? That's a really good question. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I would change too much. I think if I could go back in time, I think there was times I wish I never was a bully, but I wish there was times I treated certain people better than I did when I was younger. I think when you're younger, you're a little, you're not as mature and you know, you, you could always hurt someone's feelings, even if you're not trying to. So That's why we grow. exactly. So I don't have many regrets, but there are times I wish I could go back when I was really young and, you know, I've learned as you get older and I have a son now, you never want to see young kids upset. So I wish there was certain circumstances. I wish I didn't hurt somebody's feelings, even if I wasn't meaning to. Well, that's a great choice. That's a great answer. Let's talk about the lessons you learned. Your life had a lot of ups and downs, as far as you as you told me. You took your hits and kept moving forward. How did you do that, AJ? Well, listen, I sometimes you don't have a choice. You know, a lot of people think there's there's not like a skill. It's you have to you life is gonna throw a lot of curveballs. There's gonna throw a lot of things that you don't ever see coming and um, you're not prepared for it sometimes. So there's really, there's not really a, a why or how you do it. You just have to look inside of yourself. You have to dig deep and you have to say to yourself, you know what I want, I'm going to get through this and I'm just going to keep fighting and um, 
I want to just keep bettering my life. So it, it's hard to say how you can get through the tough times. It's just sometimes you're just in a position where you have no choice and you have to dig down deep in your soul and get it out of you. That's very deep and heartfelt. Who has been your biggest inspiration? Like in definitely, definitely my parents, both my mom and dad. My mom and dad are very different, but they're also very similar. They're very caring. Um, they want to help others. And um, yes, yeah, so I would definitely say both my parents. I was lucky enough to, you know, have both of them in my lives. And um, just they just have done so much for me and my sister and so many other people, you know, around and I learned a lot through them, both through lessons they've taught me verbally, but also actions that I see with my own eyes. What what inspired your what did your dad inspire you? My dad inspired me to always um be strong. He he inspired me to um he my dad's a visionary. So my dad sees something. Like my dad could see something very little and how he can make it big. And he inspired me to take risks. You know what I mean? Um, just like when I started the gym, you know, it was a risk to take. And um, but a lot of the things I've seen from him in the past taught me that, you know what, sometimes you got to take the risk and it can grow. So he definitely inspired me a lot with with his vision. And um, just when you have a goal, you just you just do whatever it takes to get there. And your dad and your mom. My mom is a caring um will give her shirt off her back for you. You know what I mean? My my mom's done a lot of, you know, community charity work and, um, you know, never ask for any praise. You know, it's when you really want to do something good, you don't necessarily need someone to know you're doing it. So I would see my mom do so many things throughout my life. And a lot of people don't even know some of the stuff she's done because she wasn't looking for a thank you or praise. So she's just... um. She always taught me to always give back and to help whenever you're able to. Okay. This one's a deep question. I'm ready. Let's go. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, okay Jay. Don't say I warned you. Okay. Don't say I warned you. What is the one lesson you you learned you want your son to learn from you but not life? I, <laughs> I want my son Listen, I think when you become a father, a lot changes, obviously, but it, so much more change in my life than I could have imagined. Um, I think as a father, you always want your son or daughter or child to have a life better than yours. And even if you've had a really good life, there's still things in it you don't want your kids to experience. So I think what I would want my son to, to learn is a lot of the... Um, Things my father went through, his grandpa, and things that I went through, different things, similar and different things, and how he could be better than both of us. You know what I mean? I think when you have a child, you you naturally want them to be better than you, and hopefully when I have grandkids, hopefully one day, they'll be even better than all of us. So I just want my son to um, you know, be very respectful, give back, always help, um, and be a leader. That's beautiful, man. You're going to be a great dad. Oh, thank you. You have taken all of your experiences and positively impacted our community in your own way. Champs Boxing Club, San Gennaro Festival, all those things did great impacts to our community. And you should be very proud of it. I have benefited firsthand from all that you do at Champs. It has been great things to me, physically and mentally. Talk to me about champs and the other projects you're so passionate about. Well, yeah, I mean, that means a lot to me because I know how much you love the gym and I love when you come to the gym and, and that's what it's all about. You know, I mean, like I said, the Chance Boxing Club, it's been almost nine years. We have a lot of boxers in there, professionals, amateurs, but really where we get the most joy is helping kids. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, some some kids, and we talked about it, middle school ages especially, a lot of kids don't know what they want to do. But what I love about our gym is it's a safe place. It's a welcoming place. The door's always open. And, um, you know, a lot of kids like to come and, 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 you know, physical fitness. But most importantly, I think the mental aspects of our gym, and it helps kids so in so many ways mentally. And um, it carries over to their their 
the rest of their lives, other stuff, whether it's school or work or whatever. So that's what I love about our gym, being able to help a lot of the kids in the community. And um, yeah, and like you said, the other projects, just anything, um, anything to leave a legacy and just keep helping people. If they get joy out of it, that's where, you know, we get joy out of it. Dude, you literally make me cry. <laughs> no, don't cry. Don't cry. You're really making me cry. <laughs> This is, you are great. Oh, you, thank you, you. You have done many great things. Your parents should be very proud of you. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm very, I'm very lucky. And, and listen, it's, it's all about a team. So it's not just me. It's, it's anything that I do. It's an extension of the whole team. So we're very, we're very, we're very lucky. So this is also a deep question. What's next for AJ Galante? Great question. I, you know, I think um, just keep, you know, everything in life is building blocks, right? You ever play with blocks? You know, it's just building blocks. So, you know, this year, 2024, just continuing to um, just just keep building on what we've been doing, you know, with the gym or the festival or everything else. Just do everything you can to make things better. Um, try to make people happy, put a smile on their face, help as many people as you can. Um, obviously you can't help every single person, but you try your best. And, um, and like I said, just, you know, my son's getting older and just trying to be the best dad I can be. And, um, yeah, that's really it. And, and try to learn how to play Splatoon. That's a big goal of mine. <laughs> I'm going to make it come true. <laughs> so, AJ, I'm going to be real with you. Thank you so much, man. It has been an honor to have you as my first podcast guest. This, I will always remember this moment. And I remember my 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 first step of this. Well, I, I, it's a major honor to be here. I, I can't tell you how flattered I am that you chose me because there's so many people Beyond and you mind. chose me. Maybe you thought of me because you were playing with your bunny, AJ, and you thought, oh, why not AJ? No, I was a boxing. Okay. <laughs> Well, I am truly honored. I, I love what you do. You do so many great things. I've been watching you for a long time now. You have a great family, and uh, you're going to do great with this and always be yourself. Bob, bring it. <laughs> bring it. It will be the ultimate challenge. Oh, boy. You better save that water. You better save that water. Oh, God. You better save that water, man. You're going to need it. You're scaring you me. You are going to need it. You're scaring me. What's coming up? Bamboozle. Oh, God, the jelly beans. Oh, boy. Bob, he knows the jelly beans. I'm scared now. You better not get sink monk. It's the worst. Oh, that is the worst. Or the cheese one, too. Cheese. How do I know you didn't take all the good ones out and leave all the bad ones? It's okay. We never touched that thing in years. All the good stuff is probably rotten. All the good stuff is probably rotten. Okay, let's see. Let's go, 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 go. Go, go. Oh, go, go. It appears that you have butter popcorn or Ryan egg. Oh boy! So I gotta pick a blue one. You gotta get. You got. I'll pick one. All right. Eat up. So Caillou is making me do his first challenge. So this is bamboo. So this is either going to be a good tasting jelly bean or a bad tasting jelly bean. Correct. It's either going to be like butter popcorn or Ryan egg. Well, let's do it. Three, two. One, go. Oh. Ryan egg? Yeah. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you took all the good ones out, didn't you? No, no, I didn't. Oh. No, 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 no. The dishwasher one is good. Dishwasher is good. Dishwasher. The dishwasher is good. Oh, why did you do this to me? Let's see you do it now. But No, it's my turn again? All right, fine. What is this? What's a three? Booger or juicy pear? Burger? Mm. Booger. Booger. Oh, great. I thought I was going to get two good ones. Booger. Booger. Uh, this looks like a booger. Go. You going to count me go. down? Three, two, one. Three, two, one, go. Pear. Thank God it's a pear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my turn. <laughs> Pomegranate or old bandage? My favorite. I'll count you down now, big boy. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Ew. 
Yeah, how do you like them apples, buddy? How do you like it? <laughs> you tried to set me up with a booger. You're lucky it was a pear. It's all bandaged. Oh, how do you feel? Lousy? Bet you wish you had that orange juice you drank all of before we even started, didn't you? Give me that water! <laughs> <laughs> give me that water, Agent Galante! Agent Galante, no, give me that water No, you're going to have to deal with right it. Now. You're going to have to deal with it. This is cappuccino or liver and onion. Oh. <laughs> so this jelly bean is either cappuccino, which I don't really like either, cappuccino or liver and onions? Yep. Count me down. Three, two, one. Oh, boy. How's it taste? Bad. Really bad. Is it the cappuccino or is it the, is it the what? Is it the what? Uh, it's liver and onions. It's bad. I'm done. I'm tapped out. AJ, thank you so much, man. It has been an honor to have you as my first podcast guest. You have been a Kain Ninja News friend from the beginning since I was eight, and you had a huge impact in my life in the past year, man. Here's my take. Life can be tough sometimes, but it's important to remember that getting knocked down doesn't mean that you're weak. And in fact, the opposite. It takes a lot of strength and courage to get back up and keep going. Each time you overcome a challenge, you become stronger, like a workout and able to handle whatever life throws at your way. Don't be afraid to take lit risks and learn from your mistakes. Keep a positive attitude, stay motivated, and always believe in yourself. You're capable of achieving great things, no matter how many times you fall along the way. So get back up, dust yourself off, keep moving forward, and show them how winning gets done. <laughs> <laughs>